Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the hardware abstraction layer or HAL for Linux CNC. When you create a new stepper configuration, besides the INI file, you'll notice two or three HAL files, and we're going to compare those side by side with a bare bones stepper configuration and my current stepper configurations for my G0704 milling machine. I'd also like to point out that if you check the notes below, you'll find a link to the introductory page on the Linux CNC website about HAL. I suggest you take a look at that if you'd like to learn more. Also, you'll notice that there is a card in the top right corner of your screen, which you can click to find the playlist for this Linux CNC series. There are two things I'd like to point out up front in this video. First, we're not going to be taking a very in-depth look at HAL at all in this series. And second, the reason for that is because I don't actually understand HAL. To my thinking, HAL was created by programmers for programmers, and since I can't think programming, I'm not very good at HAL. If you have questions or problems with your configuration and need help, I'm going to refer you to the Linux CNC forum like I always do. That will be your best resource. Okay, so what is HAL? I'm going to explain it as a series of layers. Onions have layers, CNC systems have layers. If I explain this incorrectly or if I use terminology in the wrong way, it's because, again, I'm not super great with HAL, and I'm sure there are people who know way more about Linux CNC and the HAL layer than I do. Uh, feel free to critique me if you like. I'm probably not going to get too offended by it. Anyway, at the topmost layer is the GUI, in my case, Axis. Axis is the thing that I'm looking at and using when I'm trying to send commands or read a status of what's happening in Linux CNC. Linux CNC is taking those commands and passing them to my breakout board, and it's also accepting signals from my breakout board. HAL is the layer that connects virtual pins in the software to physical pins on your breakout board. So for example, let's say we want to assign pin 10 on the breakout board as a home switch, so it would be an input. When we trigger the switch, we want Linux CNC to acknowledge that it was triggered, we want it to know that it was a home switch that was triggered, and we want it to report to us that it was triggered. The first thing you would do is you would wire your switch to the physical pin number 10 on your breakout board. The second thing you would do, and this is what the stepper config wizard will actually do for you, is it will assign pin 10 as the appropriate home switch. When the home switch is triggered physically, the virtual pin is signaled, and it passes that signal down the chain, Linux CNC reacts, and it reports the event to you in Axis. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go in trying to explain what HAL is and what HAL does. It's actually much more complicated than that, but we're not going to get into it. The next thing I want to do is just quickly show you a comparison between the three HAL files that were created in the stepper configuration that we created in an earlier video and the stepper configuration that I'm using in my G0704 milling machine. We're not going to get real deep into this stuff because I don't really understand a lot of it and it's probably not going to apply directly to your situation. So I've already got these three files open. Over here on the left, you'll see the HAL file for the configuration we created in an earlier video, and you'll notice there are only two lines and they're both comments. You can tell they're comments because they have the hash in front of them, or hashtag if you're from not my generation, or pound if you are from my generation or older. Um, over here on the right, I'm going to show you just a few things on the uh, custom.hal file that's created for my G0704. So you'll notice that I've left the top two lines there, they could be deleted, and then I entered my own comment, and I leave my co comments in bold so that I can tell the difference between my comments and comments left by the stepper configuration. But the following is for the Hanyang VFD. This is a variable frequency drive that I'm using on my milling machine to control the spindle. So this is all driver-related stuff, connecting pins to the driver, virtual pins, that is, to the driver, and this is information that I obtained from the Linux CNC website. I did not write any of this. The only thing that I've personally edited down here is when I first installed the Hanyang driver, it had to be done after the fact. It's now included in Linux CNC installation. In the old version, the command line to activate the driver, which is this net line here, or net command, um, was to activate the spindle command RPM. Uh, that's now just called spindle command. And so instead of deleting the old one, I just commented it out and then I added the new one. So you can see really basic edit there. I uh, don't need to be a programmer to know how to comment something out and how to paste in a line that needs to be there. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the post GUI HAL. This file is created and launched after Axis or whatever GUI you're using is loaded. So for instance, it will have a lot of your virtual control panel 
information in it. In fact, it says here, including PYC, uh, PYVCP panel, that's Python virtual control panel. We'll be getting into this a little bit later, but uh, not super in depth. But um, the only line item that's in here is the set spindle speed to true. And I, I can't remember if I added this or if this was built into the, uh, well, no, I didn't add this. This is the uh, configuration we did earlier. So yeah, that's the only actual command that's uh, in this file. In mine, you can see I've got a lot of stuff, and most of this is, again, related to the virtual panel display inside Access. And I'm not going to be able to show you that because my uh, installation of Linux CNC, uh, let's see, let me just minimize that right here. This is my mill config. It won't launch inside this uh, simulation. Uh, for those of you who I who haven't just watched my earlier videos, you're looking at Linux CNC running inside of a virtual box on top of Windows 10. You can't control a CNC machine this way. I'm only using it for the purpose of making these videos. Okay, so back over here, we've got how connections for the virtual panel. Uh, down here, we've got some other stuff. Uh, Han Yang, I know that's a Han Yang command. So this is related to my uh, VFD and these all have HY, so I know they're all VFD related. Here we enable the VFD after EMC, that should say Linux CNC, is set up or is up and running. So uh, yeah, not too much there that could really help you, I guess. Um, hopefully you're just kind of getting familiar with seeing um, some of the command lines. You will notice here that uh, actual velocity is in revolutions per second, not revolutions per minute. So we scale it and that's what this set piece scale gains 60 is. Um, this is something you're just going to have to know if you're uh, going to be running some kind of VFD. You'll probably have to have a scaler like this. Um, this sets for absolute values. That way we don't have negative numbers, uh, things like that. You can kind of glean the purpose of each of these things. Uh, this is a filtered revolutions per second. Um, for some reason, we're filtering the signal, probably trying to clean it up uh, so we don't have too much bounce. Um, I'm not really sure. But uh, lastly, we're going to take a look at the HAL file that will be named after your installation, in my case, G0704mil. Um, this is what the basic one looks like. You can see over here by the slider bars that uh, it's a little bit shorter than mine. Um, nothing's really grouped together. There are not very many notes, so it's kind of hard to know what a lot of this does. We're going to take a look at mine, and I'm going to show you an example of where a physical pin is connected to a virtual pin. So let me scroll down here. Uh, let's see, spindle related stuff. This has to do with my spindle sensor and how many pulses per revolution I'm using I have at the spindle. And this is because my spindle encoder is actually on top of my motor instead of on top of my spindle. So every time I get 1,024 pulses from the motor, uh, one revolution, um, I've actually gone this fraction, which is uh, 0.5497 of a revolution on the spindle itself. So, um, as a bit of a uh, aside, this is why you either have to have your spindle encoder on top of your spindle itself, or you have to have a one-to-one -one drive to be able to use rigid tapping uh, on a milling machine. So kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, this is phase A, B, and Z. This is all spindle encoder related. You notice I write notes like only enable the signal you're using. Don't use these when trying uh, when tying A and Z below. Uh, just use for two signals or for quadrature. So if I were using a quadrature signal, which is AB phase plus index pulse, or also called the Z, then we would have all three of these activated. On my lathe, um, and this this code is all for my lathe. It really shouldn't even be here in my mill. But on my lathe, we're using phase A and phase Z, and that's why phase B is um, commented out. Uh, this setup ties fa phase A to Z. So if you're only using a single index pulse, and this is something Mach 3 will do, but Linux CNC doesn't really like, um, you actually have to tie phase A to the index pulse, and that's what this stuff does here. Um, this is what a quadrature setup might look like. This ties your pins. In this case, let's say pin 10 to A, uh, pin 11 to B, etc. cetera. Um, and so if I were using a quadrature signal, um, three phases, I would uncomment these three lines and I would comment out these three lines. So uh, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of why you want to leave comments and some of the things you're going to kind of be looking for when you're troubleshooting or adding new functionality. 
Uh, let me come down here real fast. I want to show you one more thing. This is all home and limit switch related. This version is for all limits and homes on one pin. And so the pin that we're using is this all limit home. And on my breakout board, it's pin 13. And then all of this information is to tie um, home switches and limit switches to pin 13. So you'll notice this version is for home only on one switch, but with no limits. And this is what that code would look like. Now, the way that you can get this code is you could jump back over here and create a new uh, stepper configuration, grab the wizard, and you could go through all of this and just make changes like we're going to skip here. Okay, let's say we're going to set up uh, pin 10 as my home Y, pin 11 as my home Z, pin 12 as my home X. Now we just go ahead and keep jumping forward. We don't care what any of this is. We're gonna say yes. Okay, here it's created. Let's jump in here and take a look at the my mill Hal. And now if we come down here, we can find those 10, 11, and 12s, and there they are. So this is the information that we're going to need to enable a home switch for each pin if we wanna use three pin for home switches. But in my case, like I said, I have all my homes, my limits are my home switches, and I have all three of them on a single pin, which is why we're using uh, this version right here. All limit home on pin 13. So anytime you're trying to figure out a new piece of information and you wanna edit an existing configuration, just go ahead and create a junk config like this. And then when you're done with it, close it all down and just throw it away. And then create a new junk config when you need new information to paste into your uh, into your existing configuration or the configuration that you're using. Flood coolant is run by a relay, which happens to be pin 16. That's really cool. Uh, charge pump I'm not using. I know that's a Mach 3 feature that everybody seems to love. Uh, it's a safety feature. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Debounce, limit, and home signal switches. Basically, we're just trying to filter out noise. I thought I had noise from my switches on my lathe, and so I was using this debounce. Um, you can see it's all commented out because it ended up not making a difference. I think I had electrical uh, interference, something like that. And then there's some stepper-related information down here and something about tool changes. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Anyway, guys, uh, that's going to be everything we cover in this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel uh, if you liked this video and you would like to see future Linux CNC videos. I'm not really sure at what rate I'll continue to roll these out, but I do have several more planned. Thanks for watching. As always, I will see you in the next one.